Hello, Fairfax County Public Schools community. This is Dr. Brabrand, Superintendent of Fairfax County Public Schools, and welcome to our final town hall before the start of school. We're thrilled to have you here this evening. We're going to be talking about parent supports, particularly around technology, and we're so delighted to have you with us this evening. We'll be having these town halls not just now before the start of school, but also during the school year as we're encountering and starting a year unlike any other in the history of Fairfax County Public Schools. We're delighted to have you here for the next hour and we're going to get right to your questions and comments in just a few minutes. I have several special guests to introduce to you tonight. First, we have our Director of Equity and Family Engagement, Leona Smith-Vance. We're delighted to have her here. She's got a lot of resources to share with you that she has available to families and parents as they navigate this, this new normal that we're all experiencing here in Fairfax County. So we're gonna hear from her shortly and hear about her experiences. I also have a key leader in our instructional uh, technology world, our IT world, Tracy Jewell. She is our director for IT, uh, and she's been in uh, that role since 2018. Uh, 16 years in FCPS, Tracy, and I know you will be able to talk about all the technology support and resources that we're providing families and students and teachers as we prepare for a strong virtual opening next week. And a bit later, we're going to meet folks from the front lines, one of the best ESPITs in Fairfax County Public Schools. I know this because over 10 years ago, she was an ESPITs for me at Fairfax High School, and that's Pam Gallietta. And we're going to be talking with Pam about the proactive approach that she has done working with her team and staff, working with parents and kids to make sure our teachers and students can really leverage the instructional technology and resources that FCPS provides. I do want you to know as we begin this evening, we acknowledge that we are in an unprecedented time. We are opening a school year unlike any other school year in the history, the 150 year history of Fairfax County Public Schools. But I say to you tonight, no team, no school system has worked harder to bring to you the supports and resources so that we can meet every child by name and by need. And we will continue that commitment throughout this school year and in the years ahead. I'm really excited for you to hear all of the things that we've done around supporting resources, especially around technology. And we know technology has been a uh, part of the new normal uh, in this pandemic. It has brought challenges for us, real challenges, even here in Fairfax County Public Schools. Uh, we have struggled at moments, but we have soared much more than we have struggled. And I am proud of the staff, the staff in the front lines, the staff in the central office, the staff all over the system who have taken lessons learned from the spring and have applied them as we prepare for a strong virtual opening this school year. So hang with us this year. I ask for grace, not grief, that we can give that to each other, to our students, to our families, to each and every one of us, it is a tremendous time. We know you have struggles and challenges and worries, and we do too. But together, working together in partnership, we will deliver an extraordinary school year for your children and for your family. So let's get right to it. Tracy, I want to start with you, uh, your director in IT support services. Thanks for being here this evening. Mm -hmm. So parents want to know how will technology, talking about struggles but also soaring, Talk about how the fall, this coming school year, will look differently than the spring from a technology support point of view. All right, happy to do that. Thank you, Dr. Brayran. Thanks for inviting me to be here tonight, and um, thank you all for joining us. I did just want to take one second to say a quick shout out and thank you to all of our IT folks who have been working day and night for months <laughs> to try and get us uh, positioned as best they can for success for the fall. So big thank you to our technology support staff at the schools and all the folks in IT who've been working behind the scenes tirelessly on the systems. Way to go team and thank you. So speaking of that work, that is going to be, I think, part of the difference maker between um, what parents saw in the spring and what they'll be seeing in the fall. And so a couple of the, the strategies that we've employed to, to deliberately make it look different for the fall is um, we've, we've spent a lot of time um, creating a lot of resources for parents and students 
around some simple things with technology that might make their lives easier at home. And so there are a number of tip sheets of troubleshooting guides, of videos on how to use different products like Google, like Google Meet, like Blackboard Collaborate. Um, and those exist in different languages as well. And so families can go onto the FCPS website and mm. find a lot of those resources uh, and be able to sort of get a jump on some of the technology issues uh, even before school starts. So that's one of the things that we've put in place. We've also actually added some technology support staff at our largest elementary schools. So they'll, they'll see some additional staffing there this fall to help support uh, the technology issues at those schools. And then additionally, in the spring, we had to, to make our switch so quickly, as you know, because uh, uh, the things uh, around COVID were happening so fast in our world that we had to quickly figure out how to do support when not only were all the teachers and students working remotely, but so were the support staff. And that created some significant challenges for us. And so in the spring, the teacher really ended up being the conduit for parents and students to get that technology support, which we know was a challenge for, for the teachers and the school staff and created some challenges on our end too, frankly. And so we've created two additional avenues where parents and students can help, ask for help directly without having to go through the teacher. Fantastic. Yeah. Tell us about that. So the one is uh, a parent technology help desk, which has its own 800 number. A parent technology help desk yes, with sir. its own 800 own number? Own 800 number. Do tell. So we have expanded the staffing and, and contracted with some folks to provide that help. And so parents can call that number directly without having to go through their school, through their teacher. And there are folks on the other end of the line that can provide basic support with different technology issues that parents might encounter um, with their parent accounts, with some very simple things, audio troubleshooting, video troubleshooting for their kids' uh, computers, that kind of thing. Um, and there is language support on that line as well. So, so families who are not, uh, where English is not their first language can get some translation support on the line when they call that parent help And desk. Tracy, what is that number? What is that line for I call? have the number here. I don't know if we have it on Do the screen. Do you have that I number? I have the number. Please share it the number. It is 833-921-3277. This suddenly feels like an infomercial, but I'll say it again. 833-921-3277. 3277. That's so, the parent help honestly, desk. Honestly, parents can go to the website to get technology resources, tip sheets, mm -hmm. things like that. But if you're still struggling mm -hmm. and you need to have that human connection, there's that 800 number you can call free of charge, mm -hmm. language support. Mm -hmm. And what time of the day can I make that call? That's the other beauty of it is has extended the hours of our support. So it actually runs from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. in the evening, seven days a week. Seven to 11, seven days a week. Is anyone really using this or is this, an, is this a waste of resources? I mean, <laughs> Tracy, tell me, is this something people are using? Well, we're getting about 600 calls a day. So 600 I, calls I think it's being a used. day yes. on the technology yes. line. Yes, yes, just on the parent helpline. And Wonderful. So, and a lot of those calls, as I said, they're able to resolve right at that first point of call. If there are some more complex issues that we really need our site folks to be able to look into, then that desk can help create a ticket so that our site folks can look into it. And we're working with that desk daily. We have daily check-ins with those folks to see what are the tickets about, what's trending, so that we can expand the services that that desk is able to offer as we oh, go forward. Outstanding, outstanding. Tracy, what is the best advice that you would give to parents who are watching tonight um, to deal and work with technology with their kids for the fall? You know, I, I know that's going to be new to a lot of parents, is having, <laughs> new to all of us, right, having your, your children learning in this way. And so I think a couple of things to set yourselves up for success. Number one, whether you're using an FCPS laptop or your own, shut that down at the end of the day. Shut it down completely. Not just close it, not just sleep it, actually shut it down completely and power it off mm. at the end of the day. Boot it up again the next morning, about 15 minutes or so before you really need it. Because what that does is allow the computer to reset itself and go out and grab the updates it needs to keep the device healthy. So you know what, Tracy? A full confession tonight. I often put my computer on sleep, thinking I, yep. that lets me really quickly get back to it. But it, you're it saying it does let the, you do that. <laughs> but at the end of the evening, I hear you saying, I need to 
to close it down if I want to get the updates, the upgrades that the FCPS network is making. Is that a true statement? It is a true statement. Some upgrades will push in the background. You'll never know it happened. But to get the full upgrade experience on any device, not just FCPS, really you need to shut it down and mm. let it boot back up again. So that's one thing. Um, another thing I would say is be mindful of what you have connected to your network. I was talking to a colleague the other day. We started going through what's actually connected to our home network. I think he ended up with 27 devices between phones, uh, streaming sticks, laptops, smart appliances, all kinds of things. And so just be mindful of that. All of that consumes bandwidth. And so you might want to look at limiting some of that activity during the day when your kids are learning. And then the third and final thing I would say is be patient. This is new for you. It's new for your children. It's new for us. And so I think we're going to have to be patient with each other and work through a lot of these issues. We will get there. We're in for the long haul. We'll get there. Just be patient and give yourself some grace as you go through this. Well, you know, you talked about grace, and we talked about that right at the top of the program, and also the long haul. COVID is here. We know COVID is not going away. We have to be a school system that provides new instruction for students, graded instruction, and we have to figure out how we can provide that and meet all of our children's needs. And it's not going to be over in a week or a month. Um, we're going to continue to do everything we can to provide the right educational supports for students and families. Let's take a few calls, Tracy, and see if there's some callers that would like to share them with questions for you. Caller, welcome to the Community Town Hall. Hello, welcome to the Community Town Hall, caller. We're going to go to one more call. Hello, welcome to the Community Town Hall. Yes, can you hear me? Absolutely, welcome. Thank you. So my question is today, my son was not able to get emails from his fourth period teacher. Uh, we logged on an hour before the class was supposed to start and um, reached out to his teacher. She said she would try again. It didn't work. She tried sending it to me, but realized I couldn't forward an email to his school email because I'm outside of FCPS. Um, I did call the Parent Technology Help Desk. They told me they would put a ticket in, but it would take several days to even route that question. Reached out to the counselor, reached out to the middle school services, and it's now 6 o'clock and still hasn't been resolved. And so I'm trying to figure out, he's getting emails from his other teachers, so he completely missed. The advisory meeting, you know, there was no recording, and he still is not able to get emails from his fourth period teacher. So we're kind of at a loss of what to do in that situation. Right, it's a, it's a good question. I'm sorry you're having to deal with that because I know that can be frustrating, especially when you're getting them from other teachers. So sorry that you're having to deal with that. So what happens on the back end, just so that everyone watching is aware, when we uh, sign that ticket either from the help desk or if a parent or student goes to our website and enters a ticket themselves, it will auto assign that ticket to the right site. And so your site support at your school should already have that ticket. So I would recommend contacting them tomorrow to see where that is in the queue because it should have already been assigned. Thank you, Tracy, for sharing that. Let's take another phone call. Caller, welcome to the Community Town Hall. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the Community Town Hall. This is Dr. Brabrand. All right, I'm going to go ahead and transition and um, talk up, uh, with Pam Gallietta. Uh, Pam, you're in your 17th year uh, in FCPS. Um, as I shared earlier, I know you were at Riverside Elementary and Rocky Run. Um, and of course, I know you were at Fairfax High School years ago when I was principal. Talk about some of the things that, uh, some of the actions that you're doing at Rocky Run and that I know that are happening at other schools that ESPITs are really a part of doing to help ensure that all students are engaged and prepared to have really a positive virtual learning experience on September 8th when we start school. Great. 
Uh, I'm actually very glad you brought up the, the fact that this work is happening at every school because I feel like it's important to share that, you know, I'm one ESPED at one middle school, but this, this work is happening all over the county, every school. I've just seen this amazing um, just community-wide effort to, to meet the needs of kids right now, and it's been just inspiring, and I learn from my colleagues every day. We have strong principal networks that, that communicate with each other. So I just, I'm glad you brought that up because this is, this is one experience, but this is happening everywhere. Um, this is a big week this week. We're leading up to September 8th, so we're really making a targeted effort to make sure we're reaching every kid and accounting for every child, every family before we start on September 8th. Uh, leading up to this, we had our laptop distributions, we had um, jumpstart programs for our students, we've had multiple community events at, at Rocky Run. But this is the week a lot of hard work is getting done. Our teachers on Monday spent um, some significant time sending out links for Blackboard Collaborate to all of their students so that we can have that security through those Blackboard Collaborate links. Um, we have been addressing the tickets coming through for technology, making sure that we're accounting for all of them. It's been amazing because it provides us with a real clear system to track the support we're providing. Um, this week we have been doing orientations and yesterday we did, it was, we called it a pre-orientation and um, we, had, uh, we have an advisory period in our schedule and all of our teachers for that period, they checked in with their students. It was a quick 10 minute touch base and we were able to use the data from that to start following up with students. And we mm. had about 800 kids show up out of 1,100 and we were wow. really excited by that. And um, as a result of that, we, we put out a survey after that asking, what do you need now? What, what, what's missing? What's not, you know, is something not working? And um, I believe my uh, amazing assistant principal, Tom DeRusso, shared with me that I think there was 70 uh, follow-up interactions that we made as a result of that pre-orientation. And then uh, today we had our actual orientation and uh, it was wonderful. Our teachers were there uh, welcoming their students. Our amazing leadership team at Rocky Run, uh, led by Dr. Amy Goodlow, she, we had popped into the sessions. And uh, we now have even more data on, on who's showing up, who we need to reach. Um, we do have students that we still need to reach. We have a couple of laptops that still need to get out, and, but we, we feel really, really guided and we can be very purposeful with our, our connections that we're making with families. You know, Pam, what's amazing when you were talking about the orientation, 800 out of 1,100, you know, we've done orientations for years when we were together at Fairfax <laughs> and schools across in a normal year. <laughs> to get 800 kids to come to school for an orientation <laughs> yeah. almost never yes. happens. Yes. And look at the power mm -hmm. of this virtual connection. Mm -hmm. It really does tell me what our schools are really doing to make that connection with kids and how much our kids and our community yeah. want to be connected with our schools. So what an amazing job. Can you tell me a little bit more all the work you're doing to be ready for kids? There's so much work that I know an ESPITS does to help support teachers so that teachers can be ready yeah. for kids, so that teachers understand the technology, understand the instructional resources that the technology can help leverage to make the classroom even more engaging and exciting. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you and other ESPITs are doing to help teachers feel even more confident in this virtual platform than they did in the, um, the sudden uh, change that we had to make back in March. Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad you mentioned the teachers. I have seen such amazing teacher leadership through uh, this, just the past few weeks as we transition back to school. We've, the county has provided some very uh, amazing professional development, specifically focusing on the meaningful learning experiences, the um, student-centered learning environment. And so our teachers have been accessing that training. As ESPITS, we've been supporting them to access that training, debrief with them at schools. At Rocky Run, we held a, it's, it's, an ed, it's called an ed camp. It gives teachers the option to, to choose topics that ed interest. Ed camp? Yes. <laughs> Tell very, me about EdCamp. It's Pam. very exciting. It's it's just a it's a perfect. They call it an unconference, and it's a it's an opportunity for teachers to get together. And um, if something interests that teacher, they can choose uh, to to have that topic. There's not really a facilitator. It's more of a discussion. And I think the most powerful thing that comes out of EdCamps is the resource sharing, because a lot of teachers need resources, and they learn from. Um, 
from other teachers and they they were given they could practice lessons they could practice the breakout rooms and blackboard collaborate so we were able to debrief at the schools um, from the county professional development um, I know as ESPITS, and, and for me, it's, I, I always feel it's very important to just sort of blanket everything with the safety aspect of the online um, uh, start. Uh, it, with an in-person start, we're always focused on safety. We want to keep our students safe. And I think that that's very important online as well. It's always, you know, safety first. We're, secu we're sharing secure links. We're accessing approved county tools. And um, we really want to make sure we're being safe online. Pam, how did the technology work during the orientation? How did it go? I mean, this uh, was our first yeah, foray getting ready question. for the year. How did it go? Uh, it was it was it was good. Uh, we had a couple teachers who needed to get access to their Blackboard Collaborate Ultra accounts. I was able to support some staff in doing that. Um, all of the students did receive their invites for it. Um, again, we were able to account for the students who might not have found them. Um, and we uh, we discovered some audio issues on the computers, but I have an amazing, phenomenal T-spec at Rocky Run named Yvette Wild, who is she is on these parent tickets when they come in. And um, fortunately, it's kind of syncing up with our distribution, so we have um, uh, the ability to have some some of the students come into the school and, and do some restarting in the building. We found that restarting, if, if restarting, as Tracy mentioned, is, is a powerful way to troubleshoot. And if you can do that, if pull into the bus loop or something and restart on the FCPS Wi-Fi, it tends to resolve some issues as well. So not even getting out of the car, driving up to the school, wow. restarting. So it's that's a little tip that I know my, my T-Spec has shared that's been helpful. So when in doubt, drive to an <laughs> FCPS school and restart your yes. computer. That's uh, yes. another takeaway from tonight. Yeah, teachers too. It helps with teachers too, yep. <laughs> One thing that I think it's important, Pam, and for everyone to know here in Fairfax County Public Schools, we required every school to do a virtual orientation prior to the beginning of the school year to do just what Pam talked about. Really troubleshoot, have a dry run, get kids comfortable, get teachers comfortable. Yes, there's going to be issues. There were, but we get them resolved. There could be some issues next week. We'll get them resolved. We've put in place the tools at the teacher level, the school level, and even at the system level to respond if there are technology challenges. We hope they're not. We hope they're few and far between. But if they happen, we will be prepared to take the steps necessary to, uh, to meet those challenges, to redirect and ensure that instruction is maximized. I think we have a phone call. Let's take a phone call for Pam. Caller, welcome to the community town hall. <laughs> Caller, welcome to the community town hall. I'm Dr. Braybrand. Let's go to an email and see if there's an email. Uh, we're having a little trouble there with the call coming in. One of the email questions is, are, as you begin to plan for bringing students back to the classroom, will you give parents the option to change their original decision made in July from virtual to in-person or vice versa? Um, the reality is, right now, we are planning a strong virtual start. We will look, um, as we move into the school year, uh, the opportunity for a phase-in plan. Um, at this point, we've made no decision about making um, uh, additional resurveying of parents. We certainly want to um, approach this year unlike any other by being very deliberate, by being very measured, and uh, we will keep that uh, option in mind. We very much would like, of course, to try to honor those that wanted to be virtual, uh, that expressed that preference back in the summer. Uh, and again, we will update the community um, as we get closer to looking at that. I do want to remind everyone right now, though, our focus is a strong virtual start. Even as we talk about dialing in some students for in-person, our initial look would be at very, very small cohorts of kids as we look at lessons from around the country and the world where they are not mixing in between classes and we need to step by step build confidence in our staff, our community, um, that COVID is not going to be part of the learning process when we're in person or that it is minimized to the absolute greatest extent possible. So we are going to have a slow but steady approach as we look at those opportunities during the year starting with our most vulnerable students first. 
Let's take uh, another email. I'd like to petition to prioritize the children of essential workers during this transition period. It's particularly hard on us to provide medical care to the community while trying to make our kids keep up with virtual learning. As an emergency physician in our community and a single mom, it's particularly important to me that my fourth grader gets the support that he needs this year. I look forward to hearing more about your plans for reopening. Is there a way we can get in touch with someone for immediate help like a teacher or a dedicated IT person for the school or class? So first of all, thank you for all that you are doing um, to support us and this entire community with COVID. We can't say enough about our medical personnel and what they have done from the very beginning to be there for our families, for our children, and for our community. I would tell you that reach out to the school and we can get you some additional technology and support help. And I also want to make you aware of a program called um, Supporting Return to School that's being run by the county and our schools and up to 37 of our schools that is providing some supervised care for children while they are accessing virtual instruction in Fairfax County Public Schools. So uh, you can learn more about that by, uh, Leona, how can they learn more about SRS? I know you're a part of that with family engagement. Sure. Um, I would say the easiest way is to go to the Fairfax County government website and I would search in the top box, Office for Children or Child Care, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. And it's a great program offered from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. And we have, they have trained staff there to help children uh, work through virtual learning and engage in small, very much like you said, Dr. Brabrand, in cohort style learning, very safe. Um, and so I do highly recommend if you're still looking for a safe place for your children to go, check out Fairfax County Government and look for Supporting Return to School or Office of Children. Thank you, Leona. And that same cohort approach is the cohort approach that we will be using as we identify small groups of cohorts to be able to come in. So now we're going to go to Leona. Uh, Leona, as you know, you're our Director of Equity and Family <laughs> Engagement. That's, that was a warm-up question, and now we're going to get to talk I'm to you. I'm in good company. <laughs> You've been a principal um, in Fairfax County Public Schools. Um, You've been uh, an assistant principal. You've been a school-based technology the specialist. The best job so ever, Pam. Look at that. <laughs> I was in Espitz for six amazing years. Wow. <laughs> so now everything's come full circle. Full circle. Um, and we're thrilled to have you in this new role because one of the things we're talking about this year in Fairfax County, um, not one of the things, the thing we're talking about is equity right. and putting equity at the center of all that we do and say. I challenged our school system this year to make personal and professional commitments to equity, mm -hmm. and we need to lead with equity as the main thing in Fairfax County public schools. COVID has revealed the need for that more than ever. Mm -hmm. Racial unrest after the murder of George Floyd and the additional murders and killings that we're seeing, we know that we've got to make equity front and center. And you are doing so much work to support our families and our schools. Talk a little bit first though about support for families. What support can they expect from your team this year? Well, first I'm happy to be here and I will say I'm a parent first always. And so um, just today, my sixth grader was able to do his virtual orientation, which was great. He got to meet his teacher. She told a little joke. He told a little joke. I tried to stay out of the camera and the technology worked great. My, first, my second grader did it yesterday. So I want everyone to know that no matter what position I'm ever in an FCPS, I know that families are the key to this work. Without you entrusting us to your, to their, to your children, we have no work to do. And so you are our key partners of making this successful. So a lot of things have already been shared this evening from um, both Pam and Tracy that I'll sort of summarize that we're doing collectively. You shared about that virtual orientation. So every teacher in FCPS has held a virtual orientation in some form. So you should have talked to your child's teacher sometime this week. You may still be engaging in those tomorrow. I have a, I have a rising ninth grader, a little bit nervous about that. She's going to Westfield and she gets hers tomorrow. So very excited about her to learn about. And she's using Schoology, which is cool. And she's gotten on easily today and found her schedule. So lots of good work happening. So virtual orientation is one. That's that relationship. Another thing that's happening a little later in October is that traditional type of back to school night, but it will be virtual. So getting to know a little bit more about the curriculum, what's the expectations in the classroom. We know that's important work, but right now what's most important is connections. 
So this week and next week when you're connecting online, take the time to get to know your child's teacher and let them get to know your child. We've also been partnering with lots of people in FCPS around communication supports. I hope you're receiving those Monday countdown to back to school. There's a lot of good information in there. We're having town halls like this. Last night, you and I did a Spanish town hall. Claro que si. If you have not heard Dr. Braybrand's Spanish, you need to see it and Ay, hear caramba. It. <laughs> and town halls like this to ensure that we're engaging our families. Another great tool is our parent phone line. So in addition to that technology helpline, we know there are many families that need lots of support in other languages. And so you can call the parent helpline and there are seven different, eight different languages to ask about anything beyond technology. Um, I don't know how to find my child's schedule. I don't know who the counselor is. Someone that speaks that native language to help you feel connected and they will work, they're working they were answering calls all the time. It gets sent to them as, an, as a voicemail. They call you back. Great connection. So lots of communication supports. And then, Tracy, you've talked a lot about technology support. So that tip sheet and all those videos, soon in your mail, hopefully this week or next week, you will get a tip sheet mailed directly to your home that has things to think about setting up a learning space. What do you mean Google Classroom versus Blackboard? Um, we all work collaboratively to create that one pager and it will arrive in your home sometime this week or next week as that just put it up on your refrigerator and it is available in other languages as well. Um, I know Tracy's team has been working with my our team, Dr. Braben, to think about providing internet access. So if you are struggling, if you're watching this right now from your TV and you don't have internet access, please reach out. There is no reason to not have it at this point. We are ready to help you. There are MiFi devices and we're piloting a program. We're working with Cox Communication that Tracy's team put out there. So if you need help with that, we'll, we'll be willing to help you. And then Dr. Braybrain, you mentioned about um, um, SRS, which is our child care partnership program with Fairfax County government supporting return to school. It is in 37 schools. Fantastic. Each of those schools have about 60 kids. They're going to be in cohorts of 10, very cohort style, following all the CDC guidelines. And what's great is we've collaborated and provided professional development from our staff to their staff, how to use Blackboard, how to use Google Meet so that they can help the students who are in their care be successful virtually as well. And also thinking about expanding that into the evening and some of their community drop-in sites as well. Mm, fantastic, Leona. And then finally, um, we know that during this time, there's lots of supports you might need. So if you are in need of food support, if you're in need of school supplies, please do reach out to your school. We've provided every school, every child in a Title I school got some Title I, um, got some school supplies. We did that in March, and we did it again just in the last two weeks. Great. And then there are students who are in need at non-Title I schools that also receive these school supplies. If you're in need of food, I'm excited that our food program is continuing, and we have some programs where you can even get food on the weekends. If you need meal support and you need food, please don't sit home alone and, and suffer. We have ways to support you. And then we just have lots of great resources with our parent liaisons and our parent resource center. They are providing webinars constantly. I saw one the other day about setting up your learning space and they walk you through how to set up your learning space virtually. And they had pictures and English and other languages. So lots of great things happening. I love it, Leona, love it, love it, love it. And one of the things I know you just talked about food, a great shout out to all of our food and nutrition workers who've done an amazing job, the bus drivers who've gone to make those routes. And I wanna let you know, we recently heard just in the last day that nationally USDA has allowed us to look at the summer feeds program as the de facto program for this fall. We are working closely with state officials that will give us additional flexibility to put more meals in more kids and families' hands with less administrative hassle and more opportunity for our bus drivers and food nutrition workers to do their primary jobs of going around and being able to distribute needed resources like food, uh, sometimes perhaps technology, and maybe even some other instructional supports as the year begins. So we're excited. Stay tuned for more information on what we've already done with food. Um, we think we may be able to take it to the next level with this recent and unexpected announcement. Glad to see USDA recognizes the unprecedented situation that we're all facing many families out of work and need food as a lifeline.
Let's take an email. I'd like to express my appreciation as both a parent of five and an educator living in FCPS and in Fairfax County. As a parent, I understand many of the challenges people are facing as we navigate this pandemic. I'm a teacher in another county and state, and I'm grateful for the diligent amount of work, perseverance, um, and dedication that all professionals uh, here have dedicated to this virtual learning process. No one could have imagined this, and I'm delighted to call Northern Virginia our home, optimistic parent of a seventh grader. Well, we appreciate your appreciation. Thank you so much, and, and listen, we know um, many of you are grateful, but many of you are still frustrated, frustrated with your own challenges, frustrated with the challenges of your children. And we know that the virtual environment, regardless of everything that we do, and we will do everything we can, still presents challenges both seen and unseen, heard and unheard. And we all desire to return to normal. What that looks like and how it looks it's that uncertainty that I know has been traumatic for all of us, including me. There was a recent article in Ed Week that the worst job in the United States right now is to be a division superintendent. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way at all. Because of, of comments like this, I know folks understand we are all trying to do the best we can with grace, with respect for kids, for families, and for our staff as we all together face this unprecedented moment. But we will get through it together, and we will come out FCPS strong. So thank you for that comment. Now we're going to take a phone call. Caller, welcome to the Return to School Town Hall. Hi, good evening. My name is Catherine Rubish. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm currently a teacher at Bailey's Elementary. Um, hi, Leona. We would done some work together as well. I, I know that name. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Um, so I was wondering, um, Bailey's is clearly a very high needs population, along with several of the others in Fairfax County. Um, most of our families have no technology access um, with computers, Wi-Fi, or really any experience with it. Um, we've been working hard with, Leo, like Leona said, about trying to connect our families with MyFi, um, but we're actually running short at our school. And I also know that we've been trying to connect families with Cox, but that requires like a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Um, so we've been really working hard to provide resources to our families in need, but a lot of our families have been waiting outside for over three hours waiting to try to get help. Um, so I'm hoping that in order for us to be successful this year, that perhaps you would consider hiring extra T-Spec or SBITs for some of these high need schools, um, such as Bailey, shout out. Um, honestly, even if anything, we can just have some extra hands as soon as tomorrow. Um, we, I've been there most days this week and some of last week, literally helping parents learn how to turn on the computer. Um, so I'm just asking for extra help because we want everybody to start off successful. Absolutely. And I want to tell you tonight that help is on the way for Bailey's Elementary. I know that we've just been ordering additional MiFi's, and I believe a shipment came in uh, just earlier this week, Tracy. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow yes, morning. How many additional Wi-Fi's? We're going to have 1,500 that we are going to whip around really quick. And thanks to our friends in transportation who are going to help us with buses to drive those around and get them out to schools so, so as fast as So there it is, everybody. Tomorrow we'll have more Wi-Fi's in, and we'll be bringing them over to Bailey's. I also want to just say to all of you, as you're experiencing frustrations, teachers uh, at a school, of course, I know you work with your principal. But please don't forget, and I'm telling the community this as well, Fairfax County is large, but we want to make it more personal. And we've divided our school system into five regions. We have regional assistant superintendents supported with executive principals to provide direct support to schools with challenges like this. So if you're a parent uh, or a teacher and somehow it's, you feel like your school is struggling or you're having a difficulty, first, of course, work with the principal uh, but if there's a challenge that just seems to uh, still be there, then reach out to the region office and they will work to marshal division resources to help provide the resources that already exist at the school level. So we will follow up with Bailey's tomorrow and thank you, caller, for your extra efforts in making the Bailey's community feel 
supported and included and respected. Equity is part of what we must do this year, and we have to have equity and access for technology for our students to be successful. Let's take another phone call. Call or welcome to the community town hall. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good evening, welcome. Good evening, thank you for all you do and thank you for taking this question. Um, I have two kids, one is in the elementary and one is gonna be in ninth grade. Now, during um, the first, um, when the school closed, we used to get some lesson plans and packets in the mail and they were really great. Now, my question is, if the technology doesn't work, do we get any of those lesson plans so we know um, we can help our kids to you know, follow through and, 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 and do their homework and we have something to, to as a guide? Well, thank you for your question. I may let Pam uh, add a little bit more in a moment. Our plan is to get every kid connected virtually to provide not only the laptop, but also the internet access necessary for your child to be successful. If for some reason you're still experiencing challenges, all I can say to you tonight is we're committed to doing whatever we need to do, whether it's through technology uh, and computers or the packets or some sort of way to get the instructional program to your child. Uh, Pam, I don't know if there's anything else you'd want to share beyond what I just shared. Um, sure, I'll, I can't necessarily speak to the packets coming from the secondary level. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't do packets this past spring, but I do know that many of our teachers are preparing to have the asynchronous option should something happen um, with technology. Uh, Dr. Presidio sent out some very clear um, information to all principals and ESPITs the other day that uh, is, they're kind of prepping our teachers to have really quality synchronous instruction available should anything happen with with the Wi-Fi or I mean I know you know our teachers are working so hard right now and our teachers are feeling understandably overwhelmed so I'll, I'll hear some concerns from teachers um, you know what if my power goes out what if my Wi-Fi goes down I mean those are just the realities of working at home and it does it's part of the it's part of the heart it's, it's part of the struggle right now and so um, I know that that's, that's one um, sort of directive we've been given is to just have some, some good asynchronous instruction there. Again, it doesn't necessarily speak to the packet side of it, but um, it, it hopefully will be there as an, op an opportunity for students to continue that learning should something happen um, with, with connection one day or, or, or um, you know, if just if we lose connection and, it's, and things are gonna happen. And I, I do think um, it's, if we can just relax a little bit and sort of, come at this with, with kindness and understanding and realize that that's, that is going to happen, um, I think we'll, we'll be okay. And we'll have options and we'll have plans in place to continue learning even if something does happen one day where there's not access. Leona, did you want to share some additional information as well around this question? Uh, well, I think she did a great job, but I just, I'm gonna put my principal, teacher, mom hat on. When all else, and you just need a moment, get a book. There is not enough reading that your child can do, whether they're in elementary school or secondary. So I do know that our schools are working so hard for both synchronous and asynchronous. They're ready to pivot whenever they need to. There's new asynchronous tools, especially in elementary school. There's some software and websites kids are gonna get to engage with. But at, if there's anything, if anything ever fails and you just really need a moment, there's nothing better than reading. Finding a cozy spot and reading together is the best thing you can do anytime. So that was just my advice. Great advice, Leona. <laughs> Let's take another call. Caller, welcome to the Return to School Town Hall. Hey, good evening, and thank you all so much. We are very grateful for all the efforts and appreciative of what you have been doing. Uh, we're the proud parents of three Robinson Rams, and we had one graduate last year, and we have another one that'll be graduating this year. My question is, has Fairfax County given much thought at all to how to make this year special for our seniors? Uh, that's a great question. One of the things I want you to know, I've been working closely and my staff has been working closely with Nathan uh, Onabuto, who is our student uh, representative to the school board, about a message to the class of 2021. This is a personal uh, question for me too, as I, we all talked about our parent hat today. 
I'm a parent too of seniors this year in Fairfax County. So I understand how important it is. We all want a special year for our kids and especially our seniors. Um, we're exploring ideas right now about how we can make sure this is a meaningful and powerful and special senior year for our seniors. Uh, I'll have some additional ideas to share uh, with Nathan and Nathan and I will be sharing with all of you in the weeks ahead. But right now, um, I would simply say to the senior class, um, we care about you. We're going to do everything we can to make this an amazing school year. And I am very hopeful, very hopeful with my thoughts and my prayers that we can end the year differently than we begin it for our seniors and really for all of our students. But we have to give ourselves grace, we have to be patient, and we have to work together um, and hope for the best and continue right now in the moment to do everything we can for our senior class. I know senior class pictures are going on right now, um, and we, we, we're busy starting to look at how we can do additional things uh, socially with our seniors, and we'll have some updates in the weeks ahead. Let's take another phone call. Caller, welcome to the Return to School Town Hall. Hi, how are you? Thank Good. you so much for taking our call and, um, and uh, doing this. We really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Uh, I had a, thank you. Uh, so I had a couple of questions. Um, the first question is for the parents who had selected on the survey to do 100% virtual, I understand there's an effort to go to a hybrid model later on in the year. And in the original plan, it was we're only going to get like two and a half hours of teacher time. But right now, with this full virtual start, we're going to get almost the same amount of time, uh, teacher interactions, as an in-person class. Um, it, when we do switch to a hybrid model, do you foresee the people who do the virtual start will go back to two and a half hours, or will we continue to have the same amount of teacher interactions? No, that's a great question. I think it's really one of the real questions we need to look at as we ponder dialing in for more school. I would love to tell you, someone told me just the other day, we all want a crystal ball, but right now it's still a bit cloudy. What will it look like? And I can't predict that what it will look like in five months is what it will look like even from two months ago when we made the decision to start virtually. I do want to say something else tonight to the community while we're on this topic. I know the decisions around whether to go virtual or hybrid were major, major topics of discussion, and I received plenty of feedback both ways. But I have to tell you, I have to tell you that in the last several days and weeks as I've looked around the country at school systems and universities, including here in our very own Commonwealth, to start in person and then to within days be returning virtually is something that helps me know and makes me believe that starting virtually was the right decision for Fairfax County Public Schools. I accept responsibility for that decision and I accept responsibility to move forward in a measured and methodical fashion to bring students back, but we're gonna start with cohort, small groups of cohorts as our first dialing in what we talked about earlier in July, which is what we're calling now hybrid learning. How many days, how many kids? Hybrid learning as we envisioned in July was almost 100,000 kids in Fairfax County Public Schools a day. And we're seeing universities and school districts with far less thousands of kids experiencing COVID at a rate that is unacceptable for them and it's unacceptable for Fairfax County Public Schools. So we have to do this in a way that the health conditions support it, that our staffing conditions support it, so you can still have the same teachers and programs, and that we have the supports in place to make sure that in-person instruction is as safe as it can be for our kids. Let's take an email. Why is Google ha Hang... Ugh. Let me try that again. Why is Google Hangouts removed from accounts? My kids used to... My kids used to use this to write me questions or ask for help when I'm busy working. So, Tracy, I'm going to let you take that one. Talk, talk to us a little bit about Google, maybe Google Hangouts, and other things with Google that we've been doing over the summer with sure. Google. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so there is always a little bit of confusion around Google Hangouts because it's, Google has migrated the name. And so, 
Google Hangouts sort of evolved to become Google Meets. And so the, the tool that um, many teachers will be using to do their interactive sessions is Google Meets, which derived from that Hangouts program. So we, don't, we do control in our environment. We don't allow kids to chat outside of our environment. And that really is a security feature for all of our families because they, even if the purpose was to try and, and make it so that kids could communicate out to parents, they'd be able to communicate out to anyone. And we wouldn't want that to happen. So part of that is a security feature. Um, but in terms of the other work that we've been doing with the Google environment over the summer, we're moving to um, a much more robust version of that environment that I think will give our teachers a lot more features to work with as they proceed with virtual learning. And so the Google environment is alive and well, and I think we'll see even increased use of that this year. And I don't know, Pam may have something you want to add about that too. Um, sure, yeah, we, we're beginning the year with uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra as our primary synchronous learning tool. Um, the reason that our leadership team chose to use that tool is because, as Tracy mentioned, there's a lot of really amazing features coming with, with Google Meets. Um, however, they're not, we don't have them right now. And we really felt that it was extremely important to have one consistent way that all of our students were accessing their courses. So we have many teachers, and I fully understand where the teachers are coming from with it. It, it. it makes total sense. They prefer using Google Meet, but out the gate to engage the students, it's really, it's, I think it goes to the communication. It's clear. So that's why our school chose to do the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. But um, as Tracy mentioned, there's a lot of amazing features coming out with, um, with Google Meets that you know, as the year progresses, and as long as families are clear on how their students are accessing the synchronous learning, um, I think it'd be okay if a teacher finds that they function better using Google Meets. I think it'd be okay if we transition over to that eventually, but consistency and clarity with communication up front is important, and especially at the middle school level. They're transferring from having one teacher to seven. Oh. So we have to be really cognizant you know, thank of that. You, Pam. I, I do want to be clear. We've, we've given flexibility uh, with platforms, but we've let school leaders, and you have an amazing school leader, Amy Goodlow, Dr. Goodlow, and your staff, deciding the tool that makes sense based on the needs of your school. We've provided flexibility um, for platforms, and uh, we felt that has been very important. Um, and we will continue to do everything we can to enhance all the platforms that we're using uh, in Fairfax County Public Schools. Let me take an email. Uh, speaking of technology and technology support, give us an idea of the number of staff dedicated to this. There are 180,000 kids in the county. Um, there's actually almost 190,000 kids in the county. How, how many uh, full-time staff are there for help desk? How many of the tech support help staff are using Schoology? Um, and there's some concerns, well, gosh, you're using a new uh, program in this new virtual environment. That may be especially challenging if tech support staff are new to Schoology. Why don't we do Schoology real quick, Tracy? I believe that's a pilot just in a few number of schools. Yep. And then talk about tech support overall for the division. Sure. I know we've done a lot of budget investments around tech support just this summer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Schoology is a pilot that's going on in 17 of our schools this fall. And so those schools have been getting throughout the summer some training in that environment to make sure that they're set up for success for that. In terms of the tech support for it, our application support folks have been involved in um, setting up Schoology for many, many, many months uh, prior to uh, COVID even. And so we have a lot of support personnel that are there and ready and, and able to support those 17 schools as they pilot that program. And, and of course, that will expand as we move to Schoology in the coming year. So. Um, so there's good support around Schoology for those schools. In terms of the broader tech support um, that we have, so we have um, some help desk folks inside of FCPS that have, uh, they're, they're sort of divided into what we call kind of our frontline level one support, that's our IT service desk. So, um, and then there's a, another uh, level two support, that's our application support. Those two groups are about 40 folks that man the phones in, uh, in FCPS and man the tickets and man the, the emails that we get from, uh, mostly from staff requesting support. So there's that. 
There are also on-site personnel who support at all uh, schools and administrative centers across the division. So if you add up all those folks, that's probably a total of about 180 support folks who are spread out all around the county providing support at those sites and remotely for teachers and staff as they're working from home. So that's the big picture of what that staffing That's great. Like. One of the things we did at the end of the year in the budget that I thought was important and want to share with the community, we added additional support for SBITs at all of our elementary schools, even those that before could only get or afford a half-time SBIT. We made an investment with the support of the school board and the advocacy of the school board to make sure that all schools had a full-time SBIT. We also provided additional support at schools for T-SPECs. SBITs, as you've already learned, provide instructional technology support for students and teachers. T-SPECs are really doing the nuts and bolts of making sure the hardware works, the software works, um, helping with the laptop distribution and getting those computers ready. And we provided additional T-SPEC support at our elementary schools. So really proud of doing that additional investment. The other thing, and I know we already mentioned it, Tracy, but as we're getting near the end of the call, we did put dollars toward this parent technology support line. That number, one more time, if you're having an issue at the school or you go to the website and you're still struggling, what parent support number? It's actually going to be on the TV. Oh, oh, hold the presses. Okay. Here comes the number. Look at these folks. They're on it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read it read while it comes number. up. 833-921. 3277. 833-921-3277. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 7, 7. I feel like I'm on the FCPS <laughs> telethon raising money for technology to put equity at the center of all we do for our students and families. Call that number, ask for technology help, and if you want to make a donation, just let us know. Let's take one more email. What's the expected commitment of elementary second and fourth grade parents during this school day as we start virtual learning? I understand I'll be at home, but should I be acting as an in-person liaison for the teacher, helping my child with tasks when needed, or will it function as an actual classroom where they will ask for the teacher's help? Leona, I'm going to actually ask you as a former elementary principal and really director for family supports, how about take that question for us? Sure. So Teachers, as, as you have shared, have been working very hard to get ready. So this will function very similar to a full day at school. This is going to be fully functioning. Um, they've been learning about all types of engagement strategies. There will be breakout rooms. They can raise their hand. In addition, there will be small groups as well. So the goal is that your child will be so engaged and building relationships and excited that they will be, they, that you will not need to be involved. However, we know that our students have lots of needs, all types of needs. And so if you are struggling, if you find that your child is struggling without your support, you need to reach out quickly. I would say reach out to the teacher or the counselor, if that's your first line of defense, and then go to the principal or the assistant principal. We want to tailor this experience to your child's need. You keep talking about equity at the center, and I want everyone to know when we say that, we mean child-centered experiences. And this virtual environment has created that platform to allow us to do that. Putting kids in small groups, providing resources, engaging activities. So if that's not happening, we need to know. Um, even if your child doesn't even speak English. And last night, you and I heard a lot about worries around my child doesn't speak English. We have supports at schools. They have laptops. They're ready. They've been trained. So parents should not have to be hip to hip, but you are your child's first teacher. So remember, this is about two-way engagement. You do want to know what's happening, and your child should be successful independently. Thank you, Leona. Let's take one more call. Caller, welcome to the return to school town hall. How are you? Thank you so much for the communication. You're Am welcome. Um, so again, thank you very much for this um, informing communication town halls. Uh, me and my family moved from Florida where my daughter finished her fourth grade in a private school system. And again, one of the reasons we moved to Virginia besides the fact that I did all my education in Virginia was an amazing, robust public school system. Um, COVID hit in March, and um, obviously Fairfax system was not ready for it. But her private school, which obviously only deals with 400 students and a few teachers, rolled out a very robust 
strong, very, very strong virtual online classes. Now, seven, eight months later, I'm, again, debating as a parent, do I want to trust a massive system? Fairfax is a massive system, two, three billion dollar, you know, uh, budget every year, thousands of permutations, and again, a lot of work to be done um, to start her in fifth grade in Grace Falls Elementary School or trust the system that worked when COVID hit and was very, very successful. We would love to be integrated to the Virginia Fairfax school system. That is the goal, obviously, we moved up there. But at the same time, she's at the, the very vulnerable stages of learning, and I do not want to miss a beat. The school system down here started three weeks ago, and obviously we're trying to get these mm -hmm. things um, a little bit wrinkled out, smooth for startup in Virginia. So, again, that's my question. Sure. As a parent, what would I, what would I do? Should I go with a sure thing, or should I trust a system that last year kind of – it scares me to death. No, thank you, caller. And that's a, that's a great question, and that's a great call. And first, I'm glad you've come back to Virginia to get an education for your child. The Commonwealth has one of, by every ranking imaginable, one of the top five education systems, public education systems, in the United States. No one was ready for what happened in March. No one. We're ready now. We are ready to return to school in a virtual environment and meet the needs of our children. I ask you to put your trust in Fairfax County Public Schools, and I believe as a parent and as a superintendent that you should re-enroll your child in our system. Don't judge this system, I say to this community, based on two weeks in March. Judge us on a legacy of year after year having the best teachers, the best principals, the best bus drivers, food service workers, custodians, central office staff. Well, maybe not the best superintendent, <laughs> but the best of everybody else in the United States. Person for person, classroom per classroom, there is no better system. We will meet the challenge of COVID-19, and we will have a successful school year. I can't predict a perfect school year, and nor can your child's any other school can in this country. Some of the most well-known institutions in America have been brought to their knees because of COVID-19. Even when they planned, even when they analyzed health metrics, they still found challenges. So I can't guarantee you a perfect year, but I can guarantee you that our team, no one in the country will work harder than FCPS to provide an outstanding education for your child. So make that decision tomorrow to go in and register your child and welcome back to the FCPS family. We're time, uh, it's time to wrap up, and I really want to thank all my special guests, Tracy, Leona, Pam, for being here, all of you for watching tonight. But Tracy, I'm going to start with you. Final words for our parents tonight as they get ready, not just for next week, the first day of school, but for the entire school year. What advice, what message do you want to give our community this evening? Well, that's a big question. Well, first, thank you. Um, thanks for continuing to partner with us. I will say that a lot of the work that we've done over the summer has been because of the feedback and partnership that we've had with the families, with the students uh, in our community. And so thank you for that. And I think the message I'd love to leave you with is breathe. <laughs> this is tough. You know, it's tough what's going on in our world right now. That complicates what's going on in our schools, what's going on in our homes. And there's a lot to deal with, all of us. And so just breathe and remember that we're working together. We're going to get through this, probably not without bumps because everybody's having bumps right now, but we'll continue to work with you and we'll continue to work for you to make sure that your child gets the education that they all deserve and that's what we're here for. So I'd say breathe, be patient and work with us. Thank you, Tracy. Leona, final words, a message to the community this evening. That was great. Um, one, I think I'm gonna say this. We see you. you. You are welcome here. 
we are here for you. I know that no one here or at schools, we don't show up for income or accolades and we don't often get it, but we are here because of your children. So whatever it is that you need, um, I would echo what you said about working tirelessly. If we have not thought about it, tell us. This is one of the most responsive and proactive places I've ever worked and I've worked in other places and I plan to stay in Fairfax and that, that's why I'm here. It's for you, it's for your families and know that we will do whatever we can. And so if we're not communicating enough, let us know. If you need something, let us know. We're here for you, we see you. Thank you, Leona, what a powerful message. That is really about equity at the center of all that we do. Everybody wants to feel seen, included and respected and we know we have a ways to go in that journey, but we're committed to making sure that happens. Pam, what are your final thoughts um, for the community tonight um, from your role as an ESPITS sure. in our schools? Sure. Um, I will go with that we are prepared this year to function in a proactive capacity. We are provided with many supports from the district right now that are going to enable us to function at the school level in a proactive capacity. I have seen such collaboration in our school teams that just has brought me so much joy. Seeing our T-SPEC work with um, our school counselors, working with our administrators and our teachers. Our teachers have so much on their plates. They're showing up to help us with laptop distributions and all of the support. So we are prepared to be proactive as a community. Uh, we're connected, we're a very connected district. We're, we're better together. I fully believe that. I, uh, my role is an ESPIT. I, I collaborate all the time. Our principals do it as well. I think we're very, we're very prepared this year and I feel confidence and I feel joy um, for the school year. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Leona, and thank you, Pam. And you ended with the word joy, which is how I'm going to end our return to school town hall tonight. We need to breathe, we need to feel seen, we need to feel support, but we all need, in the midst of this global pandemic, we need to feel joy. And I feel joy that I am alive and part of Fairfax County Public Schools, an amazing school system that will do everything it can this year to go over and above to deliver the best education for each and every child by name and by need this school year. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful, great week of school next week. And we will be back in touch with you in the weeks ahead to continue to partner with you, as Tracy said, to hear your feedback and to continue, as Pam said, get better together. Leona, Pam, Tracy and I all say have a great evening and we'll see you again soon.